Hello, it's me, part six. We're doing basic color space inside of Mari. I was originally gonna do channels also in this video, but this video after recording it gets quite complex. There's a lot in here. So we're gonna save channels for part seven. I have been dreading recording this for so long because color space is probably the most technical thing you can do when it comes to texturing. However, it's incredibly important. I hope everything in here is 100% correct. However, I have potentially made mistakes. So if there are any corrections to be made, they'll be pinned in the comment section below. This is gonna suck. Let's just get over and done with guys. So we're gonna start off with a little Mari Moan and it is related and the first lesson I wanna teach. So I promise stick with me before we dive into the meat of this video. It is useful, I promise. This week, I've been having an issue inside of Mari where no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to paint scalar 0.5 linear value gray. Don't worry if that's going over your head for now, we'll get to that, I promise. This is an incredibly basic and necessary function of 3D texturing and yet no matter what I would do, it wouldn't come out right. I wondered if my color space was wrong, if my view transform was incorrect, or if I was selecting an sRGB value instead. Nope, Mari was just bugged. So some great people at the Foundry and on Discord were able to diagnose it eventually, but for a while I was going a bit crazy trying to work out what I'd done wrong. It turns out I was doing nothing wrong. Mari is just bought for a, a really basic task. It apparently will be looked into in the future and I got the reason why it's not right, but as a consumer paying way more than any other piece of software I own and with which my relationship is already quite fraught, it was one of the most frustrated I've been in quite a long time. So why air my frustrations on the internet? Well, other than the therapeutic properties of having a moan and the hope that one day Mari will do an actual monthly subscription model. I'm never not gonna complain about this. Basically, the thing I wanna imbue on you is that color space is complex. We're only gonna cover the basics in this video and even that gave me a headache writing out a script for it. Even when it looks like everything is set up right, sometimes it still doesn't work. So having the underlying knowledge of what your maps should look like and what they should do is incredibly important because when things do no doubt go wrong, you are able to fake it and fix them. You may need to gamma them up to make them look right, you may need to gamma them down, or you may need to change this, you may need to change that. I've done it before and this week I had to do it again. So yeah, that's a professional VFX art it's telling you that sometimes you just have to fake it so you make it basically. So yeah, you will get frustrated with color space, but brushing up on your theory will help alleviate the color space related migraines you're no doubt gonna get. Now on with the show. So we're gonna define some terminology up front. And first of all, let's talk about linear versus sRGB. This is probably something you've heard of before, but may not understand. What does linear mean? For the sake of a Mari beginner's video, I am gonna simplify this somewhat. I'm not gonna talk about gamuts. I'm not gonna talk about chromaticity. You might find that if you started looking into this properly, some of this information is a little bit too simplified, but for the sake of just using Mari, I don't think you need a proper color scientist level. However, if I do do a future video about color space on Mari related, then I will go into this a bit more detail, but this is just basic color space for Mari to begin with. So Michael, what the hell is linear? Well, a linear color space is one in which pixel values equate to light intensities. So if we have a look at this graph here, you can see a linear line. So 0.5 on this graph means 0.5 no matter how you look at it, 0.5 equals 0.5. Light in the real world is linear, and so that means there is direct correlation between a linear color space and the real world. Lighting and 3D packages also are linear, so textures need to be linear at render time as well. That's kind of all you need to know. sRGB, on the other hand, is a color space which most online images are encoded with, and it is how monitors and TVs display images. It has a gamma of roughly 2.2, which is how our eyes and brain perceive light. So if we look on this graph, you can see this gamma 2.2 curve and 0.5 does not equate to 0.5. It's something like 0.218, I think. So a little bit of context to this, our eyes actually perceive small changes in low light the same way they perceive big changes in bright light. So if you think about it, when you're in a dark place, you can see a lot of difference between really, really subtle variations of light. But when you're outdoors and it's really, really bright, everything kind of looks the same value. So again, I'm just gonna say, your eyes perceive small changes in low light the same they do as big changes in bright light. And we can kind of see that on the graph. If we have a look at this gamma 2, 2 curve, 50% of the image stores only about 20% of the brightness. Whereas the top 25% of the image then stores the top 50% of that image. So you can see that curve is unlike the linear line, not storing the data linear, linearly, oh boy. So when you have a non-linear encoding of an image, you are basically using the bits or the, the data of that image better. So a gamma 2.2 screen is effective because it matches the way human eyes see color. It's not linear, 
um, because our eyes aren't linear. Because it is not linear though, when you go from the pixel value zero to one, two, eight or 0 0.5, it is not in fact actually mid gray as you would expect. So if we look on this curve, 0.5 is not actually mid gray. It's only about 20% gray. So this is a problem when it comes to doing maths inside of a 3D workspace, because like I was complaining about earlier, you kind of want your 0.5 gray to be 0.5 gray because in displacement maps or other maps, this value 50% gray is very important for some things. And having a value of about 20% gray, is gonna give you very different results. And we're gonna get a little bit complicated now, but if you think about the maths as well involved when you're adding sRGB images together, if you're adding two mid grays in sRGB, which are about 20%, but the values are actually halfway up that curve, you're adding 20% plus 20% gray, but you're actually getting 100% gray, which is 256 or however you're doing it in sRGB. So the maths that you're getting two plus two equals 10 instead of two plus two equals four because sRGB maths is different. Whereas in linear, when you add half and half, you get a whole. So yeah, already made it way too complicated, but I feel like the context is important. You can come back and rewatch this. I talk very fast. So you're probably gonna have to anyway, right. On with the next terminology. So we've defined a couple of words that come with color space, but let's talk about now bit depth. So bit depth basically means the amount of information that a file holds. Just a quick disclaimer, bit depth and file format do not define the color space in the same way that bit depth does not define the file format and the file format does not define the bit depth. So you can get an EXR that is not necessarily 32 bit and you can get a TIFF that is not necessarily 8 bit and it's not necessarily linear or it's not necessarily sRGB. Cool. So 8 bit, 16-bit, 32-bit. Those are the three terms that we're gonna define here. What does 8-bit mean? Well, 8-bit basically means there's eight bits, eight zeros and ones that define how many values you can have in that channel. So 8-bit has a maximum of 256. That means there's 256 values per channel. That's really not that many when you start to think about it. 256 shades of gray isn't that many and means that you can't get that much variation, which is why you might consider stepping up to the next one, which is 16-bit. 16 16-bit, 16 although it's double the bit depth, is actually can hold exponentially more values and you can hold 65,536 values, I believe. Um, and basically that's a lot more. So this is why things like displacement, sometimes you'll expect roughness and stuff like that will be painted in 16 bit or be 16 bit images because you've got so much more variation there. You won't get clamping. You get a lot more values that you can play with. And then you get 32 bit. 32 bit is a whole lot more. Maybe I'll write it on screen if I can work out how many it is, but it's a whole lot more values. Yeah, so sometimes even 16 bit isn't enough and 32 bit is needed. So you might have heard of 32-bit float. What does that mean? Well, 32-bit float basically means we can store values over one, which is like a high dynamic range. The float means we no longer store it as three numbers. So for example, mid gray in 8-bit would be 128, 128, 128. That's mid gray. But in a 32-bit float, it would now be actually 0 0.5. So it's a decimal point, not an integer anymore. And basically the float in the name means that that decimal can float up and down. So you can have numbers higher than nine yeah, I'll show that on screen as a demonstration. But yeah, that's what 32-bit flow means. Cool, so on to the next terminology. So final thing we need to talk about before we actually dive into Mari, and this is color versus scalar data. What does that mean? Well, I think actually the Mari documentation defines this the best and very succinctly. And basically color data exists to be seen, whereas scalar data exists to be calculated. If you think about your 3D model, if you look at your model, the color that you're seeing is from the base color or it's the color from the spec map. Those are color maps. Scalar data, however, things like displacement, bump maps, normal maps, um, roughness, those, you don't actually see the black and white maps that you're painting or in normal map, the funky color map that you're painting. They're just used to be calculated by the shader to do something else. So anything that is seen visually in your render, that's color data. Anything that is calculated to do something in your shader. That is scalar data, it exists to be calculated. Those are two terms, especially scalar, that you're gonna see a lot of in Mari and you really just need to understand when something is color and when something's scalar. And with that, we're gonna jump over to Mari. Um, yeah, so what I've done is I've made some test channels, I've made some test paint nodes. I'm gonna quickly preface this because I was actually gonna do this in the Squirtle project. However, for some reason, the paint settings, the color space settings inside of there, which was set up, I think in 4.6, is different to 4.7. Maybe it's changed. That's also another thing that happens between versions. Sometimes color space can change. So um, everything was kind of wrong there. And I was, I was like, again, it was that thing. I didn't know if it was me. I didn't know if it was the software. 
I'm gonna bumble my way through this. If you're a VFX artist and you're watching this, or if you work at the Foundry and you're watching this and you're like, Jesus Christ, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, make a better version of this video than me. And that's not me saying, oh, don't be lazy and complain about my stuff when you can just make your own one. I mean, please make a better version of this video than me because the Mari's documentation isn't particularly great with this stuff. It's really confusing and convoluted. So I wish they would update that to make it a bit more user-friendly so that I didn't feel the need that I had to make this or so that I had a reference myself to go to and other VFX artists, if you get this better than me, please make a better version. Anyway, I'm going to explain it the way that I know it. If there's any corrections that need doing, they will be in the comment section below. Let's get on with this train wreck that is color space. Cool. So inside of Mari, you've got color space options in a few areas. We're going to talk about them, then I'm going to wrap this up. First and foremost, when you create a channel, we're going to talk about channels properly in the next video, but I need to address color space when it comes to channels. So I'm going to just create one. When you create a channel, you need to decide if that channel is color or scalar data. As I've explained earlier, color data, color that you visually see, scalar data, data that manipulates the shader somehow, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Already explained it better earlier. So when we get this, we get a few options here. This might be closed. If you open up this color space, you get these options. So we've got this option down here called mask data. I'm gonna actually ignore this. I never change this. This is perfect by default. It's this color data that we wanna switch. So if this were a scalar map, if this were displacement, spec roughness, normal map, uh, a mask, anything like that, then I wanna click on that this is scalar data. I also just force of habit, I always click raw data as well because I just want the pixel values, for example, in a displacement, I just want 0.5 to be 0.5. I just want zero to be zero. I just want one to be one. Same in spec roughness, same in a normal, anything like that. I just want the data to be raw, those values. I always turn that on. I don't want any color space conversion done to it. I just want the pure values that I'm picking or that I'm painting. So scalar data, raw data, this is just the way I do it. I think this is right. Um, my confidence has been knocked in the last few weeks, but I think that's Mari bugs rather than my own ability. Who's to say? So when that's good, I will create that. If I wanted to make one that was color data, I would do exactly the same thing. However, I would just leave those two unticked because I want this to be affected by color space. I want this to be affected by the view transform, which we're going to talk about in a second. That's all good. So yeah, I would leave that. I kind of ignore this color space option. I did just have a quick play around changing this and painting the same value into both and they kind of represent the same way. I don't really know what this changes. I've looked on their documentation. It doesn't really explain it very well. So just ignore that. It doesn't seem to affect anything that I can see. Cool. So yeah, we've got one scalar one. We've got one color one. So I'm going to delete these for now because I've got my test scalar and my test color here that I've handily made earlier. If I double click this test scaler, you can see I've got these ticked on. In my test color, I don't have these ticked on. If I were to view these, I've imported some information into these and we're going to go through that in a second. Uh, this is my spec roughness from Substance. Um, ignore the face, that was me doing a test. Um, so you can see this data, it's black and white. And then inside my test color, this is my Substance exports because I'm textured this inside of Substance because um, I really like the material workflow and then I'm just using Mari for final touches and skin. Yep, so you can see these kind of look correct. These, to me, they look correct. Um, but when I switch between the two of these, you can see down here, we've got this thing that's changing. Now what's this? So this down here is the Mari View Transform. And the Mari View Transform is basically a little toolbar that lets you control how colors are displayed inside of Mari and on your monitor, more importantly. Um, this is especially important when it comes to texturing inside of a VFX film environment, um, I'm going to use a term called a LUT, which is a lookup table. And basically when you're texturing on a film, they will have their own kind of defined LUTs or just looks. Um, green on one film isn't quite the same as green on another film because they're filmed on different cameras and they can be projected on different things and yada, yada, yada. And because of that, uh, down here, you can kind of make sure that you're viewing everything as it would be shown on screen or as it would be shown in other programs and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to you at home working on your personal work, it's not quite as important, but you will see that switching between scalar and color channels and paint nodes will change the way that Mari displays that information. So if I were to view my color data now, you can see that this is lit up because we are viewing color data. If I switch back to my scalar, it's monochromatic because this is a scalar channel. So that's one great way to just make sure that everything is set up correctly, make sure that this is showing it properly. If I were to view my colors without the view transform on. So you can turn it off by clicking this. You'll see it looks very dark. It kind of looks like um, 
well, just looks wrong. Um, and that is because we need a view transform on to view color data correctly. We need this sRGB LUT lookup table, and that's basically converting it so that our monitor displays it correctly. With a scalar map, that isn't important because we are not using color data. We are just using pixels for the sake of what pixels are. And um, yeah, if I turn that off, no change in theory. That's kind of as in detail as I'm gonna go with it because that's kind of as in detail as I understand it. Again, this is a lot more important when you're working on actual films and they have their own LUTs, they have their own lookups and you kind of need to match reference. Uh, when it comes to personal work, not as quite as important, but it's something to be aware of to kind of be checking down there and make sure that also if your colors are displaying incorrectly, that's not the reason why. Yeah, the view transform. So inside of the paint node here as well, the paint node has exactly the same options as the channel node. Um, if I were to create a new paint node, if I open up this color space option, I've got raw data, I've got scalar data. If I were to paint a mask, if I were to paint a displacement map, spec roughness, anything like that, that needs to be scalar data and I just click it to raw and then I would paint inside of there. If I'm painting, for example, um, <laughs> an iris or anything like that, if I'm painting a colored image, then I would turn that off and it would be not scalar data. So let's talk about importing images because that's really important. When you import something into Mari, you want it to show correctly. You want to tell it what color space it's coming in as so that Mari can kind of handle that data and show it with the view transform or whatever else correctly. So that's really important. So I've got my two um, paint nodes here. This one is the non-scalar data. So I'm actually just going to replace this and I'm going to import that color mask from Substance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go file, import, and import it the normal way. And I've got my map here, which is my color map. And you can see here, we've got color space options. So it's automatically picking it as sRGB. That's, it's basically determined by the file name, the file format, but also the paint node that you're importing it into. Um, so it's seeing that it's a non-scalar data. It's seeing that it's a TIFF um, and it's picking up as sRGB. This is an sRGB image. It is not linear. It has got a gamma curve on it. So that is correct. If it were my displacement and this were sRGB, that would be wrong. So what I would need to do is unselect that and go down to linear because my displacement, my metallic map, my normal, my spec roughness, my mask, all of those are linear data. However, this color is sRGB, so this is fine. So I'm gonna import it all and check that it's working. So let's just view that. I'm gonna view it through the channel and you can see that looks correct. Um, we can double check that. One great way to debug is just view your images inside of the file manager or whatever um, and see that they look the same. Um, with some larger bit depth images, that can be a bit more difficult. But um, yeah, that's one way I like to do it, especially with sRGB images. Uh, yeah, just make sure they look right. Let's import that again, but let's select it to linear and we'll just see how it might look if it's imported incorrectly. So you can see completely washed out, it's incorrect. If you were to import it incorrectly, obviously you can compare it versus your image to make sure something's going wrong. And because it's incorrect, then you would just have to sort of debug it yourself. You'd have to check, first of all, make sure that your paint node is not selected to scalar. Make sure that your channel node is all correct. Make sure the view transform is picking up correctly. Um, all that jazz and you can kind of debug it there. And yeah, also make sure when you're importing it, you're importing it as the correct color space for what the image is. So now for my scalar data, let's import some scalar data. And we're gonna do this by exactly the same way, file, import, but I'm gonna import, let's import my spec roughness again, that's fine. And you can see now, because this is a scalar paint node, it even though it's exactly the same file format, it's automatically picking this up as raw. So raw and linear, um, for the sake of this video, they're exactly the same thing. While I realize they are not, this is a beginner's video, I don't wanna overcomplicate things. When it comes to Asus CG and other setups, then there is a difference to them, but in the current default Mari setup, they're behaving exactly the same. If you're thinking about raw, just think of it as it's doing no color conversion on to your images. So in this instance, it's absolutely fine. I'm just gonna keep it like that and import it and check that it's working. It's a lot more difficult with um, scalar data maps to see if they're right because Colors are a lot easier to see if they're washed out, but with like roughness and stuff like that, it can be quite difficult um, to kind of see that. So two great ways to debug this. Sometimes I just open up the file manager like I was doing earlier, check that the values look roughly the same. Um, no pun intended, roughly. Or I would open up Substance and view this map inside of Substance, view this map inside of Mari. If one is noticeably brighter or darker than the other, you've probably imported it incorrectly. So again, check that Scalar is on raw data in both your paint node in both also in your channel make sure you're importing it with the correct color space all that jazz it's complicated it sucks final thing we're going to talk about is the image manager here again 
it's important when not only when you're importing like resources into your node graph, but also into the image manager that it's correct. So let's um, find an image to import. I'm going to import this. Uh, let's do grunge three. So I'm going to find this. Just import a new image here. Already inside the same thing. So we've got grunge three here, TIFF. And um, you can see here, we've got this color space option. It's picking it up as sRGB by default. It's reading this TIFF as sRGB. Uh, it is, it is an sRGB image. It's taken from the internet. Um, so that's all fine. Obviously, if it wasn't, if it was a linear image, then you can change that to linear and that would import it correctly. Cool, so I'm gonna open that. And what we'll do is we'll just paint with this and check that it's all kind of working. So if you double click an image in the image manager, you can see you can change the color space after the fact. So I could change this to linear if I wanted. So if you have imported that incorrectly, you can change that afterwards. You've also got this tick box here, raw data, which just kind of ignores all the color space because it's just interpreting those pixels as the raw value that they are. But because this is an sRGB image, then I want to interpret it as such. Cool. So if I drag and drop this now into my canvas, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to project through this. I'm just going to quickly bake that down and just check that it's all looking sort of okay. Looks right. Cool. So I hope that made some semblance of sense. I get that it probably didn't. Um, I have a headache now from trying to explain this, so I am gonna go and lay down. I think personally it's the most technical thing when it comes to texturing um, or anything in CG. I find it an absolute nightmare. Um, but if you know where all the tick boxes are, you know that you've set up everything correctly, um, that's the most important thing because sometimes it just won't make any sense. <laughs> and sometimes it's not necessarily your fault. Sometimes it is just software issues. Uh, but in general, understand what those terminology are. Uh, that's the real important thing. Um, and understand how to get sRGB data and linear data inside of Mari. We'll talk more about exporting in the next video. So how to export correctly. That's gonna come with channels because we talk about the export manager. Um, I think we've already gone over way too much in this video. Got to give a big shout out to my friend Andy for helping me through with some of this. I sent him the first draft and he corrected a few bits. He's got a really great blog here where he goes through some really technical stuff inside of 3D and he's also preparing something to do with Aces CG. So I'd give him a follow on ArtStation. This guy really knows his stuff. So I'm gonna round it up there. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Uh, sorry, I guess. <laughs> Let's call it day.